So hey guys, been a little while. Weather's been a little moody here over the last week. We got dumped down with some snow, we got a bunch of rain, and then a complete 180, and we got uh, really nice 70 degree sunny days. Ice just went out on the lakes. It really feels like spring, summer is starting to show up and stick around a bit more, and I'm very excited about that. This video, I wanted to share a few things that we learned last year raising chickens, or what we've kind of learned over the last couple of years, a few things that we're gonna change up this year, and some of the reason and logic behind some of those decisions. And if you're someone that's looking into getting chickens, kind of meat bird, or more like a cross, something you're going to get eggs and meat out of, uh, this could be a very helpful video for you. So generally every year we raise about 50 meat birds for our family. That seems to be about all the chicken that our particular family needs. The very first year we ever did this, we used Cornish Cross. And a uh, great bird for a real quick, fast turnaround. It's the type of bird you generally find in the grocery store. However, they get ready somewhere in the six to eight week range and they put on weight fast. Um, you really have to start controlling the amount of food that they consume after a couple weeks because they can put on so, my, so much weight that they can't support their own body weight, uh, even have the risk of a heart attack. So great for like a big commercial, quick turnaround type thing, but really wasn't what we were looking for. More high quality meats, um, more love and tender care going into those those birds. So two years ago we switched up our variety and we started doing a variety called Rainbow Rangers or sometimes they're called Freedom Rangers. They develop a little bit slower, somewhere around the 12 week mark. A little bit, not, not too aggressive bird, a little aggressive towards each other but really not aggressive towards us um, which is important just because of our daughter. And uh, we were pretty happy with them. In that process we ended up eliminating our laying flock with the anticipation of those birds potentially being our egg layers as well, just because our family doesn't consume a ton of eggs. I mean, it's only three of us here, so uh, even if you got you know six hens out there, potential six eggs a day or something with like a Rhode Island Red, it's just more eggs than we consume and end up having to do a lot of egg, egg bakes and stuff like that to try to hurry up and get rid of eggs or start handing them out to people. So. Our, our plan with the Rainbow or the Freedom Rangers was to kind of use them as a dual purpose bird. And they just didn't produce enough eggs for us. They were a pretty good bird, especially for uh, meat and everything. Uh, the chicken breasts definitely weren't as big as like the Cornish Cross. I don't think I've ever had chicken breasts as big as, as that. Um, so we decided we wanted to try finding something a little bit more of a dual purpose bird. Becker's Backyard, another YouTube channel here. Um, Ended up being kind enough to set aside a bunch of eggs from his flock. He has buff orphitings, which you hear a lot of people talk very highly about. And we thought, you know, let's give these a try. We had never tried them as layers. They're sort of a dual purpose bird. They put on a pretty decent amount of weight, so you get some meat out of that. And uh, that's what we did. We hatched the flock out last year. However, the one lesson I think we learned out of that is... Um, the buff orphans are a little bit of a slower developing breed. A lot of times it takes them about 21 weeks until 18 to 21 weeks until they start really getting into their egg production cycle. So last year we ended up hatching them out a little bit later than we normally do because we had planned a trip to go down to Disneyland and didn't want to leave the mother-in-law who was kind of watching over the place where we were gone in charge of a bunch of you know fresh chicks. Just not really her strength or something she's had experience with and didn't want her to have to stress about that while she stayed here. So. We hatched things out after we got back, and right after that, you add that you know 18 to 21 weeks, that put us right towards the very end of November. And at that point, the cold temperatures are moving in, and the daylight is really short at that point. So what ended up happening is we really didn't get any eggs. We, laid, we raised those chickens all summer long and all winter long. It didn't really get any eggs until this spring. Once they started coming, they came real quick, and our fridge started filling up real fast. Over this last week, I've been setting aside eggs, not putting them in the fridge. That's generally what they recommend with the anticipation of getting those into the egg incubator. So I'd like to get stuff going a little bit earlier than last year so we can hopefully get them into their laying pattern before we move into the winter. We got the incubator all cleaned up the other day. Been testing, running it, everything's all getting dialed in here, looking good. We got a bunch of eggs all set aside here. And we got our pretty little helper ready to load things up. So 
We'll take the pointy side, put that down. Why? So the air sac sits up here. stuffed in a pretty consistent temperature area out of direct sunlight this is not one of the higher incubators they have out there but it does a fairly decent job I think the main complaints of these ones are sometimes the calibration of the thermostat it takes a little bit of adjustment uh, sometimes you got to have another one in there to kind of fine-tune it uh, and then it just regulates the temperature for us and then we have an egg rotator that automatically rotates the eggs uh, and we do that for 18 days. Chicken eggs take 21 days to hatch and on the 18th day we pull the egg incubator or rotator out. We just set the eggs down there on the screen mesh and then we just have to make sure we continue to monitor our humidity in there. So I ended up moving the chicken winter water and feeder system into the pen with them. This is something we normally don't move around with the mobile coop. I suppose I could probably put some wheels and a handle on it and move it around but just something I don't intend to do. I was something I built out of a little bit of experiment. It was all built with leftover scraps from the mobile chicken coop that Chickshaw, the Justin Rhodes mobile chicken coop, and uh, so it was relatively inexpensive. The main intention of this is to get the chickens food and water out of the coop, therefore making it a little bit less inviting for mice from potentially moving in. And I feel like it's done a pretty good job. I've been very pleased with it. Plenty of space to hold food as well as water. And we recently switched to a water nippling system for the chickens. We experimented with the bottom ones, really wasn't a very big fan of that. And with the side ones, it gives us the ability to utilize a heat plate. So that's what I actually ended up doing, is putting a heat plate into this to help the water from freezing. And it did a fantastic job. The water never froze up on us, even with negative 40 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And that's before windshield. So if this last winter wasn't a test, I don't know what would be. It's actually worked out pretty good. Those nipples are relatively inexpensive, so we were able to set up several watering buckets. So what we do is have one out there, and then we'd have another one inside and just had this rotating system. It's kept their water nice and fresh and clean, and not getting any wood shavings or anything like that getting kicked into the water. And I've uh, been very, very pleased with this system. So I did want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up of some events that are going on this coming summer here. Last year we went down, attended the Homesteading Life Conference. Absolutely loved it, had a great time, took away a lot of great information. And I know we're not the only ones that thought that last year I put together a video. If you have any interest, I'll put a link down in the description below. Just kind of going around and interviewing some different people and what some of their big takeaways were. And I think the general consensus were a lot of people were very, very impressed with the speakers. And this was the very first year that Off Grid Doug and Stacey had put this event on. And I can only imagine it's going to get better. So we're planning on attending that this year, August 4th and 5th, down in Hannibal, Missouri. And on the other side of that, I did get end up getting asked to be one of the presenters. So I'll be talking on the topic of firewood this year. Go figure. I absolutely love heating with wood and the value of that. So right now, I'm in the midst of trying to round up my thoughts and ideas on type of information I'm going to share. The one thing I don't know very much about is the audience that's going to potentially be attending. it. Is it people that are new to heating with wood or people that just heat with wood and are just looking to get a little bit more value out of it or make life a little bit easier? And I'm definitely no expert on firewood, but I really want to do my best to share as much valuable information as I can. So I do have a question for some of you guys that more particularly really enjoy the Wood Heat Wednesday videos. What are some of the different firewood tips that I've shared that you have felt the most value in? I just want to kind of round up some of those and make sure I'm not overlooking something. But like I said, I don't know exactly who the audience is. I would love to have you come out and hang out. I think it should be a lot of good times. However, I'm not really the best speaker, so it could be a little bit of an interesting thing, but just like uh, anything in life, you know, sometimes you got to put yourself out of your comfort zone uh, to kind of grow and develop as a person. So that'll be what it is. I'm sure I'll, I'll stumble my way through it a little bit, but um, really hope to share as much value as I can. So if you're not going to be able to make it out to that, there is one other event that we're planning on attending this year. Uh, Pratt Family Homestead uh, is another channel here on YouTube. Really like them as a family a lot. Kind of a very similar journey, we kind of moved out of the city, out to the country, just looking to live a more self-sufficient life. And Mike and Jenny over there, just such uplifting people. I just, I absolutely love watching them and their family grow and develop. 
And I've never had an opportunity to actually meet Mike or Jenny in person. I've chatted with over text and all sorts of stuff, but I've never had a chance to meet them. And every year they put together an event called the Hoot and Nanny. Uh, it's actually the weekend before the uh, Homesteading Life Conference uh, over in Michigan. So it'll be a little bit of a travel busy period of time there. But it's sort of a potluck, just hang out. I think even this year they're looking to put together a couple speakers on a few different topics of canning and a few other areas. Just to kind of experiment a little bit with that and add a little bit more value to the community. And I uh, really think it should be a lot of fun. So we are planning on attending that. So if you're not able to make it up to Hamilton, Missouri, really want to meet up, that might be another opportunity as well. Otherwise, I'm sure we could figure something out at some other time. But love to have you guys come out and attend i think it really will be a great time so appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us today hearing sort of our thoughts and theories on chickens or our, more of our development at this point and trying to find the right fit for us and fine tuning that type of stuff so hope you guys enjoyed the video hope to see you guys out at one of the events and we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching